so today we are going to start a new chapter in which we are going to be focusing on basically the application of friction okay so few of the application of the friction friction we have already discussed and in this chapter we would specifically be focusing on belt friction now if you have noticed in all the previous problems that involved a pulley and a rope going over this pulley we said that this pulley was frictionless okay so if the tension on the two side of this pulley in the wire for t1 and t2 we said that because these are frictionless we can consider t1 equal to t2 okay however can you think of some application in which we would deliberately want this pulley or a drum or any surface over which a rope or a wire pass we would not like that to be smooth we would like to be rough can you think of some application now some of the application that i would like to show you you can see we can have a diesel generator in which let me just magnify this picture in which this motor is actually driving this drum right here or you can have similar mechanism in other applications as well for example this is an example of a band brake again this is a motor driving a drum and this is basically a brake in which you apply force here okay and due to application of this force this lever produces tension in these wires right here and because of the tension it develops normal contact over this drum and because this surface is not frictionless let us say it is mu it will also develop some resistance fric resistant friction depending depending upon what is the direction of the movement okay other application could be you can see here in which this motor is again driving <coughs> a li larger wheel that can be used to perform different kind of task for example to lift something or to rotate another object or you know to provide different kind of motion to a machine so these are the few examples that we would be discussing in this chapter and then we would be developing the formula for friction over this wire so we would be developing formula how are the tension t2 and t1 are related and what is the moment produced in the wheel you know so different kind of things all right so coming to that the problem definition here is basically you have a drum like this and then you have a ro rope that is passing over this rough surface okay so let us say this is force t1 and this is force t2 okay and we will define the total contact angle let us say this is beta okay so our goal is to find out what is t2 as a function of t1 okay now let us say the friction between this rope and this drum is actually mu s okay to develop the relationship between t2 and t1 we will consider a very small angle which is at angle theta and let us assume this angle is d theta okay and then we'll consider the equilibrium of the rope which is subtending an angle d theta at the center okay so to do that let us consider here the free body diagram of this rope which is subtending an angle d theta here so this is what you have d theta okay and if this angle 
it's not very clear let me redraw it again if this angle is let us say d theta by 2 i can again say this angle and this angle would also be d theta by 2 okay and the forces acting on this would be let us say this is force t and due to change in angle d theta the tension on this part has become t plus d t okay and we would assume that the wire has an impending motion in the direction of t2 so that's why my tension is increasing on the right hand side so the friction force would be simply in this direction and if it's an impending motion we can assume it to be mu s times n and of course the normal reaction n would be acting like this okay so let us write down in this case the equations of equilibrium so we are going to start with summation fx equal to 0 and let us see what does that give us so we will have t plus dt cos of d theta okay, cos of d theta by 2 minus t cos d theta by 2 okay again minus mu s times n equal to 0 so this is summation of fx S what does summation of fy gives you it would be just summation of fy will provide t plus dt sine d theta by 2 plus t sin d theta by 2 and this should be equal to the total normal reaction ok so now we are, we are considering the d theta angle to be very small so in that case I can make an assumption that sin of a very small angle is actually the angle itself ok and the cos of a very small angle is actually 1 so what does that give me so i can make that assumption i can simplify this part would be equal to 1 this equal to 1 this whole thing here the cost term okay and i basically get as t or here dt equal to mu s times n okay now in the second equation if I make the same assumption of angle being very small I get 2t plus dt or let me just write it again I get here as t plus dt d theta by 2 plus t d theta by 2 equal to n Okay, so here I get 2t times d theta by 2 plus dt d theta by 2 equal to n. Now compared to this term which is a t and d theta by 2, dt and d theta by 2 would be much smaller. So I can for mathematical simplification I can assume that this term is 0 and I get t d theta equal to n okay so i can substitute this back into this equation right here and i get dt equal to mu s times t t theta and i can bring it in the form of integration same variables on the same side now if if you look at it let me again show you this figure what are the if i try to integrate this what are the parameters of integration my t actually varies from t1 to t2 and my total angle varies from 0 to beta and which is the angle of contact okay that is the angle of contact so i can integrate this and i can so this i'll integrate from t1 to t2 and this is 0 to beta 
So T2 I get as T1 e to the power mu s times beta. Okay. So this is the relationship that we get in terms of T2 and T1. Okay. So let us define these parameters again. What we have here is T2 and T1. Remember, T2 is always greater than T1 if the motion or the impending motion is in the direction of T2. And that you can directly say because remember, if you have T1 and T2 on both sides of this drum, you have T1 and then a friction force and T2 has to overcome T1 plus the friction force. Okay, so if the motion has to happen in the direction of T, uh, in the direction, the force or the tension in that direction would always be greater than the other direction. So T1 is actually resisting that motion and T2 is actually driving that motion, trying to rotate the wheel in that direction. Okay, now mu here is we said that mu here is the coefficient of static friction. Okay, so this is the coefficient of static friction that is when it has been given to you that it is at the verge of impending motion or it is impending motion but if it is moving or if it is sliding you can say that the friction would be actually mu k now for any mechanism that involves belt friction okay so for any mechanism let us say I have a smaller wheel here which is being driven by a motor. What is the favorable condition? Okay, what do you think would be the favorable condition? Do you want the sliding to happen relative to the drum or not? Well, if you want the mechanism to work, you would not like the sliding to happen relative to the motor or a drum because what will then happen? it won't be able to drive so if the sliding happens between these two it won't be able to drive this pulley or drum okay so just keep that in mind okay now the other parameter is beta which is the angle of contact okay so this is the angle of contact of the wire over the curved surface okay you also have to remember that t2 is independent of the so t2 it is actually independent of the radius of the drum okay and it is only a function of the contact angle so i can also say that this result that we have got here t2 equal to t1 e to the power mu s beta it would be valid not only for circular surfaces but for any kind of curved surface okay and also other thing to note that this beta can be the angle beta it can be greater than 360 degree or 2 pi okay other point is that uh, before discussing uh, going into that one remember that beta here is in radian so when you will be solving this formula always keep beta in radian okay okay now come to this what i was saying beta can be greater than 360 degree in the cases where you have a multiple rotation around any curved surface okay so the example would be let me just show you here for example if you look at this i can have multiple rotations like this okay so if you want to uh, if you encounter a problem like this basically depending upon how many number of rotations you can multiply your beta equal to 2 pi times number of rotations and that would be your angle of contact okay all right so i hope up to this point it is clear okay so let us do our uh, first problem uh, in this problem what is being done is actually uh, there is a, a pulley here over which a rope is going over this pulley and then you need to find out the force which is required to create enough tension T1 
and T2 so that the combination of T1 and T2 can produce a moment which is 200 Newton meter. So first understand the problem that if you increase the value of F the T1 and T2 would increase so that you understand from the horizontal equilibrium right because as you increase f because if you consider summation fx equal to 0 what will happen you will basically get this equation right so this you understand now if there is enough tension then what will happen it will create enough friction force so that it does not this rope actually does not slide over this drum okay so that is what is the basic concept behind this problem okay the mathematical formulation actually remains same you will have t2 if you assume that it is in direction of t2 if the motion is in direction of t2 you can assume it to be t2 equal to t1 times us times beta now beta here is the angle of contact and which is equal to pi here okay so we can find out beta as equal to pi now once you get this what is the total moment produced by t2 and t1 so t2 is producing if you consider here t2 is producing a moment of t2 times this radius in clockwise direction and t1 is producing t1 times this radius in the anti-clockwise direction so assuming that t2 is greater than t1 the net moment produced is t2 minus t1 times the radius okay and if you substitute the value of t2 from here what you will get this is equal to t1 okay t2 to the power us beta minus 1 times So this is from here you can get t1 equal to m divided by r e to the power mu s beta minus 1. Again we will substitute the same equation in the first uh, equation of equilibrium that we had and f would be equal to t1 plus t2 and you will get basically as this equal to 1 plus or let me just write it like this it would be equal to t1 e to the power mu s beta plus 1 here ok and t1 I can substitute it here ok so you just substitute t1 from here f you will get as m divided by r ok e to the power mu s beta plus 1 e to the power mu s beta minus 1 so you can easily sorry you can easily substitute the values here 200 divided by 0.25 okay, times e to the power 0 0.255 plus 1 e to the power 0.255 minus 1 and that if you do the calculation should give you a value of approximately 2141 Newton okay all right I hope this problem is clear now let us move on to the next problem and this problem is basically an example or representation of many of the machines that you might encounter in real life so what you have here is actually a motor okay so this motor is driving or producing a moment on this smaller pulley B and this smaller pulley because of this moment rotating this bigger pulley A here okay and the coefficient of frictions are given to you as mu s equal to 0.25 and mu k equal to 0 0.20 okay and it is also given to you as an additional condition that the maximum tension in any of the belt can be 600 Newton and you need to find out the largest torque that can be exerted by 
the belt okay so by this belt right here on the pulley a okay so first you have to think how do you like you know how do you plan to solve this problem remember there are two pulleys here and you have been given mu s and mu k but mu k is just there to confuse you that is all because remember this pulley would only be able to drive the bigger pulley or only if there is no slipping between any of the pulley and the rope okay so that is the first condition and let me just write it here so the first condition is that no slippage at any pulley okay so first you need to ensure that okay second thing is that the same tension that is here on the bigger pulley if i call it t2 and t1 it is also there on the smaller pulley okay so if i have to write down the relation shape t2 equal to ts mu s times beta the question becomes which beta should i use here okay if you consider the geometry of the two pulleys and the ropes that uh, the rope that is going over that okay the total angle here is actually beta of pulley a is 240 degree and you can do the some same calculation and you can find out the angle of contact here at the smaller pulley beta b is actually 120 degree of course this is in degrees and beta need to be in radian this you can directly write it as 2 pi by 3 and this you can write it as 4 pi by 3 so then out of these two which one i need to take okay this answer comes from this condition that we just discussed that, that there should be no slippage at any pulley okay now imagine as the motor increases the rotating moment what will happen there will come a point at which the slippage will start happening okay now given that the pulley a and b where do you think the slippage will occur first remember we discussed that the tension t2 does not depend on the radius of the pulley but it depends on what what does it depend on is beta the angle of contact okay so it does not matter whether you have a larger pulley or a smaller pulley the one that will decide whether the slippage will occur or not is actually the angle of contact beta and where is the angle of contact smaller it is smaller at pulley b okay so pulley b the angle of contact beta b is 2 pi by 3 and the slippage is expected to occur first at pulley b here okay so keep that in mind so if that is the case you can draw the free body diagram here let us say i consider this bigger pulley here and this is smaller pulley that is connected to the motor and driven by the motor okay so i have t2 here i have t1 and let us say this is again t2 and this is again t1 okay and of course there is a rotating moment of the thing okay and rotation is actually happening in this direction okay so that is clear okay 
so t2 is equal to t1 e to the power mu s beta which is equal to t1 e to the power 0 0.2 times beta is 2 pi by 3 okay now the second thing here is we know that t2 is greater than t1 right as per the assumed directional motion it is also given that the maximum tension in the belt can be only 600 newton now if t2 is greater than t1 and i know that the maximum tension that the belt can carry is 600 newton which one do you think t2 or t1 should be 600 newton well it depends out of t2 and t1 which one is higher so that as you increase the moment which one reaches the limit first so as t2 is consistently higher than t1 it will reach the limit of 600 newton first so that i can put the limit 600 newton is equal to t2 once that is known you can find out your t1 as 600 divided by this quantity right here okay and this should give you a value of around 355.4 newton okay all right so once t1 and t2 is known the moment is very easy to find out the moment on the pulley a would be nothing but t2 minus t1 times the radius okay and you can substitute it there 600 and this times the radius which is equal to 0. Point. let us see what is the radius here 0 0.08 or 8 centimeter let me just write in the centimeter units so that i get as 1956.8 okay newton centimeter okay so this is the final answer of problem b okay now let us do our next problem in this problem basically a rope is shown which is going over a horizontal pipe and a vertical pipe okay and the two forces are being applied on the left it is shown as 100 pounds and on the right it is shown as p uh, just for the sake just write this 100 pounds as 100 newton okay forget about, forget about that uh, pounds units okay. so we'll write this as 100 newtons okay so you have to find out the range of values of p for which the equilibrium maintained okay so i have to find out the range of values of p okay uh, p max and uh, p min okay now can you tell me or can you think why should there be a range of values of p right i mean when would and the second thing is that when would the equilibrium of rope be maintained we know that if there's any body or any surface or any object on a frictional surface equilibrium is maintained if the the driving force of that object is smaller than the friction force okay so then the body does not move okay in this case what will happen your rope can either move in this direction okay so the impending motion might be in the direction of p so that force would be the maximum force of p or p can be very small so that it is just about to move in this direction so this would be or this would give you your p max and on the left hand side this would give you p min 
So what I have done here, I have done the free body diagram of the rope and I have cut it at horizontal and vertical contact surfaces. So basically T is what is your 100 Newton here and then it goes over the horizontal pipe right here and the vertical pipe right here. Okay, I will just delete that. Okay, so let us consider these two cases when impending motion in the direction of P. Okay, when that happens, what is your T1? So basically, when that happens, then P would be greater than T2, T2 would be greater than T1 and T1 would be greater than 100. So it is easier to find out the relationship, isn't it? So I can write my T1 as T time e to the power mu s beta, where mu s is the static friction in the horizontal surface, which is 0.25. And what is the contact angle here? The contact angle here is 90 degree or I can say uh, pi in radians here uh, pi by 2 in radians pi by 2 here and here it is pi. So just keep that in mind. Uh, on the horizontal pipe it is 0 point sorry this is the vertical pipe. On the horizontal pipe it is shown as 0 0.25 so it is 0 0.25 here and here and 0 0.20 here on the vertical pipe okay so t1 would be e to the power pi by 2 times 0 0.25 okay what would be your t2 T2 would be T1 times e to the power pi times 0 0.25 which I can further write it as T e to the power pi by 2 times 0 0.25 plus pi into 0 0.20. So I have just substituted T1 from the equation above. Similarly, your P would be or P equal to P max I can write it equal to T2 times e to the power pi by 2 times min, uh, sorry pi by 2 times 0 0.25 so I can again substitute it and write it as e to the power 2 times pi by 2 times 0 0.25 plus pi into 0 0.20 Okay, and I know that T is 100 Newton, so P max becomes 100 times e to the power 0 0.455. Okay, so this is the expression, and if you calculate it, you will get it as 411.1 Newton. Okay. Now to find out P minimum, you have to consider the other extreme which is when impending motion when impending motion is in direction of 100 kilo Newton force sorry 100 Newton force. In that case you have to go reverse. So I know in that case 100 would be equal to uh, sorry greater than T2 no 100 would be greater than from here or let me write it as T so T would be greater than T1 greater than T2 and they should be greater than P which is equal to P min okay so this is what we want to find out so in that case I'll just have to do the reverse okay and I can directly write my p min or if you write it like this you can write t equal to p min again the same thing will come here only thing is that 
this parameters have been reversed so i'll get e to the power two times or if you just write this equation e to the power 0 0.455 so p minimum is t divided by this quantity so 100 divided by e to the power and this would be equal to 24.3 newton okay so my p should be between 24.3 and 411.1 newton okay so if the p is between this range then the rope would be in equilibrium okay all right so this problem is finished here let us do the next problem and the last problem of the class exercises in this case what you have is a mass m which is hanging over this block okay and there are multiple winds here so two times here and three times the rope have been turned around at the post a on the pole a and b okay and you need to find out what is the tension t required to maintain this load now remember many times they won't tell you that there should be a range of values this 